In this video, I'm going to talk about the input arguments. Uh, so how do you call hdlm function in order to do your analysis? So now in my terminal window, I already have my hdlm package loaded in R. So we can call help to see the documentation of hdlm like this. So actually all the uh, explanation for the arguments are in the documentation already. Um, but I just want to go through them one by one in order to clarify what are they. Um, so let's start by this function call. Right, It's pretty long here. And it starts by x equal to null, y equal to null, and z equal to null. Um, so basically what this three uh, argument does is that it takes your input as vector and design matrices. So you can call your function by uh, directly giving the design matrix for the fixed effects and the design matrix for the random effects. Uh, and this allows very flexible input. And then it says family equal to by default Gaussian with the link function of that identity. So this is the family or the distribution that you assume for the response variable. So we're simply saying that this is the family of Y that you input here. Uh, and followed by rand family, this is where you give the distribution or the family for the random effects. And this is special for HGLM because only HGLM can incorporate different random effect distributions in a random effect model. So by default, this is Gaussian with link identity as well, which means that if you don't change anything, you will have family Gaussian or normal for y and also normal distribution for the random effects. And then you're fitting the normal linear mixed model. Right? Um, for instance, if you want to fit a uh, logistic regression with some random effects, you simply change family equal to binomial with link equal to logit. And these arguments. <laughs> are followed by method equal to EQL and currently we only allow EQL estimation for HLM. Uh, we haven't implemented other even more sophisticated or approximated methods but uh, EQL works nicely. Conf equal to E1 E minus 6 in R this means 10 raised, 10 raised to the power of minus 6. This is the convergence criterion that we use for uh, judging convergence in the algorithm. So basically, uh, what we compare is the difference between the last two iterations linear predictor. Uh, if you want a higher precision in your estimates, you simply change this uh, to be a smaller number. Of course, that will require more iterations, which will cause your algorithm to be slower. Than default. Uh, usually it's not recommended that you change this to be larger value because then you're not guaranteeing that um, algorithm is converging. Max it equal to 50. So by default you can set uh, or the, de the default maximum iteration is set to 50 which means that the algorithm will iterate for 50 iterations at maximum, if it doesn't converge, then it's regarded as not converged. If you want more iterations, you can change this to be a um, larger value. If you uh, want your algorithm to converge earlier, then you change this to be a little bit smaller. But then if the so things that doesn't converge, we'll just report it as not converged. Start val is the starting values for some parameters. 
and you can check the check the arguments list for the details. So basically, you can define the starting values yourself for the algorithm, um, and usually you don't have to do that because we in the algorithm we simply guess the starting values from uh, simple linear regression fitting. And then there is something else. So until here, you can only input your data using x, y, and z the matrix form, which is pretty arbitrary or flexible, which is nice. But lots of users, of course, want to use formulas as the uh, classic way in R when you call LM function, LM ER function, uh, you use formulas. So fixed equal to null, this gives the fixed effect formula for the fixed effect part of the model, and then you have a random, which gives the formula for the random effects. Uh, so when you call HLM, you have to give the formula separately for fixed and random parts of the model. But there is another function called HLM2 now in the new version, so you can actually put in the LME4 or LMER type formula in one go. So you have fixed and random together in one formula. And that's just some input difference. So in total, there are actually three ways of inputting your data into HLM package. And then you have x.disp and disp. So x.disp is the design matrix for the fixed effects of the dispersion part of the model. So you input some covariate for the dispersion or the variance of y uh, in this x.disp. Instead of doing that, you can giving uh, you can give some covariates explaining the dispersion parameter using the disp, which is a formula that you should input. So you we allow both matrix input and formula input for the dispersion part of the model also. A link.disp is of course the link function for the dispersion parameter. And usually it's log. And you probably don't have to change it at all because it's usually fitted as a gamma GLM. So log is a, a canonical natural link function. Data equal to null, this is where you give your data set as a data frame, when you call, especially when you call the uh, function as uh, formula input. Uh, if you use matrix, you just store the matrix in the memory, so load into your workspace and just call it, so you don't have to specify data here. And weights is some prior weights, uh, you should check the arguments list for more description of that. Um, well, normally you don't have to use it, uh, when you call it should um, simply. Fix.disp is to fix the dispersion parameter as something constant. And uh, so this means that if you don't want to estimate dispersion parameter, you just simply fix that to be a constant. This can be done. And this will speed up your algorithm a lot because you fix your variance component. Uh, and then it becomes actually a fixed effect model well, somehow. Offset. If you're familiar with uh, the linear model in R, so offset is where you input a covariate as offset. Offset means uh, it's simply a shift in the mean of your response variable. So there's no effect that's estimated for offset. It's just a vector values that should be subtracted from a uh, response variable. Rand C, this you have to look at the examples and the uh, documentation to understand that. This is uh, basically giving the number of columns for each uh, design matrix for each random effect. And this is useful when you have multiple random effects inputted as matrix, uh, say uh, multiple correlated random effects, very complicated model, but this is helpful for you to input your data. Sparse equal to true by default. So by default, we use sparse matrix technique to improve the um, uh, calculation speed. And variance covariance matrix var v cov mat equal to false by default. 
because this is a huge matrix to output usually. So if you want it to be included in the output, you can specify this to be true, then you get a variance covariance matrix for all the individuals or all the observations um, uh, and save it in the memory. So that you can use it later on. Calc.like equal to false by default. Uh, probably I should change this to be true. So this argument tells you whether the function should calculate the likelihood functions or likelihood values at convergence. So say when you fitted model, you want the for each likelihood, hierarchical likelihood value, some AIC, RCAC information criteria calculated also, then you can specify this. By default now, it's not calculated so that uh, the computation is slightly faster. Big RR equal to false. By default, uh, there's a package called Big RR on CRAN, also implemented by our group. So what it does is actually it fits an extremely big uh, linear mix model. So that's when you have a lot of random effect terms, or well, a lot of random effects to include, say uh, more random effects than number of observations, then this package speed up that a lot. So we fit a lot of random effects in a very short period of time. Um, and this is now incorporated in HLM as, a, as an argument or option so that you can turn on when you have more random effects than the number of observations. Uh, and if you don't turn this on, when you fit a model with, say, 100 observations and 1,000 random effects, uh, HLM will spit out some notes telling you that, okay, you're fitting a very huge model uh, with a lot of random effects, even more than the number of observations. And if you turn on this option, you can speed up your calculation a lot. And also save a lot of your memory. This might be useful for some of you. And if you are interested in such cases, say you have a uh, very high dimensional problem to solve, please check this big R package on Quran as well and refer to our paper published in genetics. Uh, that will be very useful for you. Verbals equal to false. Uh, so verbals basically means they speed out some more information when you feed the model. By default, it's false, so it's very quiet when you call HLM. You just call HLM, it takes some time, you just wait, and then you get uh, some result, uh, of course. And if you turn this on, you will see at each iteration uh, some summary of the estimate internal uh, stuff that tell you, you can see how the algorithm converge and how it behaves. And it might be something uh, useful for uh, some theoretical people or you want to compare the methods uh, so that you can turn this on. So that's it. That's my short explanation for all the arguments now in HLM function. And uh, hopefully it's uh, something clear for you. Uh, enjoy using the package and thanks for watching.